Come in. Come in! Now, if you would just wipe your feet very thoroughly, I'll wait. You're not gonna wipe your feet, are you? Okay, then. Your bedrooms are there, the kitchen is just over there. Any... Anybody need a snack? Kratos? Snack? I do not need a snack. What the hell is it anyway? That is my son. Father, I wanted to ask you something about your blades. The ones from your homeland. What of them? Why don't you just throw them away? I see the way you look at them sometimes. Like you're... I don't know. Like you hate them. Even hateful things have their uses. Besides, I tried. They came back. You know what? My face is itchy. I think my beard's coming in. Is it? Yeah, on my jawline. See? It's growing. Is it? Atreus, you are getting better. Faster. I'd even be better than you one day, huh? If you are not, I have failed. Oh. Excuse me, sir. Mind if I take a little peek at you? I promise I'll be brief. My goodness, what a strapping physique. Capable of an astounding variety of acts of violence, I imagine. What is happening? Uh, this must be the squirrel that tames the world tree. That delectable aroma. Could it be? Pardon the intrusion. Mm. Ah, yes. Amber resin. Delightfully nutty with a hint of squid ink. No. Not one for gastronomic expiration, I see. Surprised to see you out here, Sindri. You must hate the sand. Oh, it is the worst. But with Brock Band from Alfheim, it's up to me to keep you ship shape and sharp. So why is Brock Band from Alfheim? Oh, that's, um, I don't know if, well, do you know what a juicy Noken is? No. Well, thanks to Brock, the elves sure do. Uh, what is a juicy... No. Mm. Why do you yawn? Force of habit, I suppose. Since I don't sleep anymore. Although, it's far more confounding that I'm the tired one. I've seen you stay awake for days at a time without so much as a drooping eyelid. Not even a nap. Gods do not nap. Oh, tell that to Thor. Perhaps there was some confusion. This is for calling me out here, not for when I am... here. Do you just like hearing the sound of the chimes? I suppose they do sound very pretty. Master Kratos, this feels very uncharacteristic of you, but if you enjoy the pretty chimes that much, I will allow you to indulge. Yes, you've done it. Well thrown. Ah, the sound of the chimes is not unpainful at this distance, so perhaps you could... Not? Already here, as it were. So... I see. You're deliberately attempting to push me into some sort of emotional outburst, aren't you? Well, I'm not so easily swayed, my good man. Stop with the Stupid chime! Oh, oh dear. I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. Brother, I had a thought. What if we took a stealthy approach to our next battle? No. Well, lady, I was curious about some of the flora we've encountered on our travels. And you will remain curious. It's not my job to teach you everything, Mimir. Look, I was just asking. And you have been told. Oh, you can say that again. Kratos, 
Thank you for taking the time to help my people. I helped no one. They were already dead. Oh, but you did. You put their spirits at ease, and that has eased my spirit as well. I feel lifted. Enjoy it. It will not last. You're right. There are most certainly other corrupted sisters out in the realms. You always know how to end on a cheery note, brother. Here. Oh, well, thank you so much. Elf has been itching to get her ball back all dang winter. It's her favorite toy. What? Now, if you could find the rest of my armor set I left out there, I'll repair it for you. Free of charge, even. Oh, uh, actually, any dwarf can. I just didn't think you'd get my orb for me if you knew that. Sorry, y'all. Good thing you are so cautious, brother. Quiet. He's right, Mimir. Show respect. The squeaky toy could have been the death of us all. And it nearly was. Do not laugh. That's hard not to, brother. Try. Okay. Okay. Kratos, tell me of an adversary from your homeland. It will serve us well if I understand more of your battle tactics. Hmm. There was Medusa, queen of the Gorgons. Her gaze turned men to stone. A mirror would turn her own powers against her. Or, you may remove her head, but that is the hard way. Which did you choose? The hard way. Forget I asked. The light from the crystals. It is in the sand now. Would you look at that? Freya's gift endures after all. Or should I say, his presence? You are not funny. Second key. Sure enough. It's been a bit since we've unlocked a mysterious door. Excited, brother? Hmm. <laughs> Classic. Lads, I thought death had cured me of my appetite. But damn if I can't stop thinking about the smell of tear stew. I wakened a fair few culinary cravings, did. Black pudding, haggis and neeps. Oh, porridge and honey. What about you, brother? Any pre-fimble winter foods you're aching for? Olives. The hell is an olive? The realm travel room. This place has seen better days. Haven't we all? Kratos, do you remember when I brought you and Atreus in here for the first time? Seems like lifetimes ago. I do. And it was because of your guidance we were able to fulfill Faye's last wish. <clears throat> And yours as well, Mimir. Do not... Do not be afraid. You are safe. Good. Good boys. Girls. Good girls. Kratos, tell me more of your homeland. It was violent. And cruel. Sounds no different from these lands. It was warmer. Brother, you don't like riddles, eh? No. Oh, you just haven't heard any good ones. Here. I'm tall when I'm young, short when I'm old. What A candle. Yeah. Heard that one before? No. Oh. Well, did you like it? No. Just curious, brother. Why don't you like riddles? They are frivolous. They encourage lateral thinking. Listen, there are three doors before you. One contains a pit of spikes, one a dragon, and one a pair of lions that haven't been fed in weeks. Which door do you open? <laughs> the first. Pit of spikes is easily avoided. Ah, you should pick the third, because lions that haven't been fed in weeks would be dead! Eh? <laughs> I like this riddle. Where are you going, brother? Sleep. So, we're just keeping blindly on then. Hoping we don't walk headlong into Ragnarok. Is that your plan? Your father can teach you to hunt. Or 
perhaps that will fall to me as well, since all he seems to be good for is grunting. Hmm. Care to join me, Kratos? Have a seat, think about your breathing, try and find stillness in your mind? No. Going for more loot, huh? I saw a forge back at Freyr's camp. <laughs> Has Brock been helping them out this whole time? Ah, you haven't met Lunda yet. Who's Lunda? An old contemporary of the Huldra brothers. She serves as Freyr's blacksmith, keeping his team armed and outfitted. Oh, another legendary blacksmith? I bet she has some good stories. Take caution, Atreus. What? Why? She is quite... friendly. <laughs> oh, nonsense. The lad's far too young for her taste. Uh, <laughs> what? What are you doing? The bridge only grows in the daylight. I... I wanted to see the wolves again. I suppose they are grateful for the attention. <laughs> seeing your faces. <laughs> Relax. More of Helka's tracks. I dare say she's got as skilled a nose for hunting as you, brother. Hers is superior. The eyes can lie. The nose cannot. Does that make you wish you could turn into an animal every once in a while? No. Got it. I'm back. Don't mind me. I know you don't want me around. I did not say that. You don't need to. The boss sends me out the most often, and I know why. I'm unbearable. That's why you hate me. You are not my enemy. You are irrelevant. A stranger. So, you don't... despise me? I do not feel one way or the other. That's honestly kind of a relief. I mean, yeah, you're a stranger to me too. Why should I care what you think? Now you understand. Fantastic, Master Kratos. I'm glad to know we do not care about each other. Get bent! I don't know if that was necessarily the best lesson, but, uh, what do I know? <gasps> Big footprint. Smartest man alive. Well, you try making conversation with you sometime. He's got a point. Look, I'll be damned. That was a joke, guys. Are you certain? I thought it was funny. Let's go investigate, shall we? Just one stag left. Thanks for saving the realms and all that. I'd have gotten to it myself and with more style, but thanks. <laughs> You're welcome, he means to say. I normally wouldn't be so candid, but it appears that Anxious Squirrel has learned a thing or two from you about, what was it, not caring about how others perceive you? So I will permit you this one glimpse of my weakness. To require others is not a weakness. My goodness. I had not expected such emotional intelligence from one of your... girth. I do not care. Oh, well, this was a delightful conversation. Lunda. Hi there. I wanted to ask, do you want me to stop talking about your muscles and, uh, and, and, and how you look and stuff? Because it seems like it's making you all wiggly, like in a bad way. It did, but no longer. Oh, okay. So I, so I should stop? Sounds like I should stop. No. Oh, all right, handsome. You beefcake. This was the last, was it not? Only the king remains. Aye, and if you thought his berserkers were tough, well, I've been thinking about what you said, brother. Maybe it's time to let this go. Slurping up a dead man's soul with this old sword isn't gonna change the past. It is good to hear you say that, but I plan to face him regardless. What? After all your lecturing on vengeance and spite. It is not wise to let a malevolent spirit wander Midgard. 
But I needed to know you wanted this for the right reasons. Huh. Appreciate the sentiment, brother. Come here. You may tell a story, if you wish. Am I preferable to silence at last? A rare day. I'm touched. But since you mention it, there has been one on my mind of late. It goes back to my earliest days, when I had little more to do than observe the mortals who passed through our forest. One summer, a local laird of renowned eccentricity chose to sequester himself with a small coterie of kinsmen and followers. The aim of their woodland retreat was to achieve enlightenment through study and discipline. They took oaths to brook no distractions until they became wise men. Distractions? Aye. Women. Drink. Mostly women. As you can imagine, things deteriorated quickly. By autumn, tempers were frayed and wisdom remained in short supply. One day, I watched as the laird and his brother took their hunt. There they found, at the banks of a river, a lady as fair as any they'd left behind. She pleads for their assistance for fear the currents would carry her off if she tried to cross. The laird doesn't miss a beat. He hoists her onto his shoulders, carries her across, sets her down, doffs his cap, and fords back across to his brother, who is dumbfounded, can't even bring himself to speak. The day stretches on, the laird carries on hunting, and his brother quietly gnashes his teeth down to powder. Finally, the dam breaks. Brother, he cries, how could you do it after everything we've sacrificed? How could you break your vow like it was nothing? Carrying that lass on your shoulders like you were a Shetland pony. The laird just smiles. Brother, I sent that lass down across the river. Tis you that carries her still. <laughs> oh, I got a chuckle. A rare day indeed. Mumia, did I do enough to prepare Atreus? The lad survived bloody Ragnarok. I should think he's as prepared as anyone could be. To survive, yes, but to love. Brother? Angroboda. Does he? Oh, well, there were certain topics on which I suppose I may have been a touch more approachable. I did my level best to teach him the ropes. Then you taught the boy to woo. To be perfectly honest, brother, I taught him how I wish I'd wooed. Hmm. 